Here at AACR, we ask the question, is cell-free DNA or CTCs an either-or proposition? And to answer that, we have Andre and Paul from Synvenio. Andre, what can you say about that question? Is it either or? It's both. I think it's actually cell-free and CTCs, and I think it's also a germline, and I think it's whatever else is going to come along in the future. And you have a liquid biopsy platform that gives you both, is that correct, or all three? We do. We have a liquid biopsy platform that's agnostic, that focuses on processing whole blood, and it's tightly integrated with sequencing and what's required to give a molecular readout. And you say tightly integrated with sequencing. What, how can you elaborate on that? Well, it's designed to work very well with the PGM line, and in the future it'll be on the Proton as well. And we think it'll support the digital PCR solutions from Thermo. That's great. And Paul, what can you add to that? The whole uh, approach to looking at both CTC and cell-free uh, demands a, a specific workflow that understands the fact that these are very rare templates. Sure. And what we've built here in uh, working with the platforms from Thermo Fisher is a start to end solution that allows deep experimental understanding of um, blood samples and the tumor content in them. So for example, for CTCs, what level of enrichment are you able to achieve? We can enrich a sample to the point where uh, one, effectively one cell per mill of blood processed will be compatible with the AmpliSeq library readout. One cell? One cell. So in a sort of a seven mil sample, you can get seven cells? So we can detect between three and 10 cells, and that, demand, that requires that we use um, the AmpliSeq protocol, our liquid biopsy platform, and that we also do a case control sequencing so that we understand the background and the noise that is specific to each individual experimental sample. We were looking at then, in terms of that level of sensitivity, some very, very exquisite uh, level of signal that you're looking at, no? Yes, but that's what we've learned is relevant to the biological process and research uh, samples. And that applies both to the cell-free compartment as well as the CTC compartment. Both are rare events, both need great sensitivity, and I think this workflow supports um, uh, examination of both content. I'd be naive to say that the mutations, variants that you find in a cell-free compartment, I'm sorry, the cell-free compartment overlaps a lot with the CTC cells, or no? What we found is that there is um, very interesting concordance between what can be seen in a cell compartment as well as uh, in, in the, in compared to the cell-free compartment. And in fact, that those two compartments are also complementary to what can be uh, recovered and, and seen in a biopsy sample. These are three different sampling mechanisms that give you different experimental access to uh, a, a tumor and a, and a research setting. So Andre, how would you address that as far as cell-free and CTC isolation? Well, Dale, we're very excited about a, uh, a research study that's uh, completing in the not too distant future. We're comparing uh, 60 sets of cell-free DNA and CTCs, the FFP samples, and I think it's gonna produce a very solid body of data uh, that we're, gonna, we're eager to present and to share with you. That's very exciting. I look forward to seeing those results.